Grand Teton National Park, Part 1, The Geography and Geology of the Park. Grand Teton National Park, located within northwestern Wyoming, is named after the mountain range that is the center of the park. The park covers an area of 310,000 acres, or 1,255 square kilometers, and is part of the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. The geological formations found in the park contain some of the oldest rock found in the U.S., and some have been found to date back 2.7 billion years. The most common types of rocks found in the park are metamorphic rocks, aged 2.5 to 3 billion years. Starting approximately 541 million years ago, the area was submerged under shallow oceans, creating sedimentary rocks, the most common being shale and limestone. From 65 million years to 10 million years ago, the area went through cycles of uplifting, causing the mountain range to rise and the valley floor to fall. Rocks from underground were lifted upwards with the Rocky Mountain Range. The Teton Range, the youngest mountain range in the Rocky Mountains, started developing approximately 9 to 6 million years ago. During the formation, earthquakes occurred in the Teton Fault, bringing up conglomerate rocks, inside them containing traces of metals such as gold and mercury. The vertical displacement of rock caused by the earthquakes was approximately 30,000 feet, meaning the rock shifting caused some layers of rock to move up or down up to 30,000 feet. Some sedimentary rocks that are seen higher up on the slopes originally came from the valley floor. Most lakes in the park were created by glaciers approximately 250,000 to 100,000 years ago. Some areas of Jackson Hole were covered by glaciers up to 2,000 feet thick, and the glaciers carved the U-shaped valleys of the park, as well as the basins that would later become lakes. As a result of the glaciers carving lake basins, many of the lakes are located relatively high up in the mountains, some ranging in size from just a couple meters deep to some that are tens of meters deep. The glaciers also carved the formations of the Teton Mountains, with some glaciers also reaching up to 2,000 feet in depth. The most pronounced of these glaciers still remain atop mountain peaks and are visible from many points throughout the park. Experts estimate the glacial retreat to claim these glaciers by the year 2035. The park also has some waterfalls located on mountainsides. The waterfalls are fueled by the glacial melt virtually all year round and feed into lakes or ponds. The park has few big waterfalls besides the 30 meter tall hidden falls. The mountain peaks of the range are separated by small canyons which were also partially carved by the glaciers during the last ice age. The remainder was washed out by rainwater evident in the sedimentary rocks along the shores of existing streams in the canyons. Thusly, waterfalls are most common at the points where canyons drop off. The Grand Teton area is located in a cold temperature zone leading to sub-zero temperatures for more than half of the year. By November, heavy snowfall is already predicted every year and usually lasts throughout April. During winter months, snowfall averages approximately 28 inches every month, in some places up to 32 inches a month, and the total snowfall can be more than 14 feet per year. Despite the sunny day, the nighttime brings frigid temperatures, oftentimes below zero degrees Fahrenheit. In the spring months, Winter snow starts melting and precipitation becomes rain instead of snow. However, the temperatures are still cold during the nights, so snowfall is possible. During the days, the temperatures are mildly warm and some of the snow-covered trails don't melt until July. In the summer, the temperatures rise above 0 degrees Fahrenheit during both daytime and nighttime. Snowfall lying on the trails finally melts due to the warm temperatures and precipitation turns to rain, with the most common being thunderstorms. In the fall, the temperatures fall to a little above zero in the daytime, and oftentimes below zero in the nighttime. Mild summer days are interspersed with rain, and the nights can be interspersed with rain or snow. However, the snow usually does not stay for long. Fires are seen in the park most commonly from June to September, as the weather is relatively warm and the conditions are good for fire. Park management also creates controlled fires 
as a way to clear land of old plants and make space for new ones. Fire is vital to the ecosystem of the park as a way of killing off the old. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed it, feel free to like it, favorite it, share it with your friends, or you could even subscribe. And if you want to know more about the National Parks of America, check out the National Parks playlist on this channel.